Bros and a bro fist to you all. And I apologize for our brief one hour interlude there on the stream as I had some things to get done before I could get to work tonight on making some fantastical YouTube videos for you wonderful people because this week has been awesomely successful. Not only did we actually get a real genuine dragon fight, an actual proper dragon fight that I thought was not going to happen. Blue balls to the ends of the earth in our good friend guild wars 2 but we've also reached the point where we can take on the savage rat in final fantasy 14 and on top of that on that subject we have finally crossed that threshold my friends ever since i met okay mage probably two years ago at this point she has joined eorzea she has been welcomed with open arms and is on her journey to discover the journey that we went on through our days, the people we got to meet, and the people we fell in love with, and the people we hated. And mm. she's on her way, and she's having good fun, and it's great. And you guys have been amazing. All the screenshots have been sent of people crowding around her, giving her the biggest welcome. Dozens and dozens and dozens of you making it good. Uh, yes, she rolled a black mage. She will come to know the regrets. <laughs> she will come to know the regrets yes i believe she's just saved coco Busi. coco Busi is now free and happy and she will come back in merry ways i guarantee the black mage does not stick around but who knows who knows but that's not why you're here right now as i am pouring with sweat unfortunately because it is red hot here i've just had a workout and i've just run back <sighs> i'm hot i'm hot and i'm toasty and I imagine my blood is going to boil with some of the tails that I have in front of me now, vetted by our good lady Bex. That she's put in front of my eyes. So we're going to start. I haven't got my keyboard. Huzzah! Keyboard arrived. Look at that. Whoosh. As if I pulled it from my holster. Like I'm a yeehaw kind of keyboard kind of guy. That's what I am. And we will have some news for you on PreachCon this year, coming up very, very shortly. We are changing it into something that I think is really, really fun, especially for our old heads who have been many, many times to give them a little bit of spice, a little bit of flavor. And uh, yes, we've got something very cool in mind. We're just confirming what, how, if we can get it done. <laughs> We're just confirming it was even remotely possible <laughs> to get it done. Uh, but yes, the team is excited. I had a silly idea. And I really hope I can make it work. That's the only thing I've got to do now is actually make it from a thought to a reality. Uh, that's what I need to do. So we'll see how that goes. But first of all, let's start with hopefully some joy, maybe some sadness. In our last Drama Time episode, uh, we did have a message from a priest who, because of our WoW streams, decided after his long, long stint in Final Fantasy XIV to give World of Warcraft a try. And unfortunately um they apparently and i didn't know this because you know i'm not a fan of leveling uh they uh buggered up the new player experience quite badly by making the dungeons really 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 unnecessarily hard way harder than the dungeons are if you're not a new player for three years apparently <laughs> <laughs> apparently for three years they made it just really really hard for brand new players to the game how as far as we could tell from our chat uh if you start as a new player you're forced into kind of like a bubbled world where you are alone with people who are leveling in the new player experience and the dungeons you do although they're the same name are not the same as the dungeons you do if you're just doing whatever the hell you want to do to level your character uh, freehold because you have to start in battle for azeroth that's how it works now if you're a brand new player in world of warcraft you have to start in battle for azeroth uh and you start with the freehold dungeon and for whatever goddamn reason they made the new player freehold dungeon awfully scaled so that it was ridiculously hard and then just didn't fix it for three years but they did fix it recently and of course our new player who went over to world of warcraft thought they were just giga dog shit giga dog shit because uh <laughs> they couldn't complete a dungeon and people were kind of getting a little salty towards the end but there was a hero who whispered them to give them some encouragement to let them know what there was going on so let's see how our friend got on we sent some words of advice uh our way because of course us in the preach gaming community and especially on drama time are the friendliest people we call things right down the middle we are if i was to put a word 
objective. Yeah? We're objective. And we take all things into account. <clears throat> That's how we do things. Objective and uh, savory is what we do. <clears throat> yes, very fair, very objective. Uh, and we don't, uh, we're not means people. All right, it's a very short update, but let's see how it goes. Dear Preach and the team and your audience, thank you. Thank you all. Thanks to you for reading my story and thank you to your chat who filled me in on what the hell was going on. It was so encouraging to hear that these scaling issues I ran into are known and that in the judgment of the jury that is your chat, freehold is a pain in the ass. But since then, things have changed. Since I told you my tale, my priest has hit level 60 through questing. I decided never to do dungeons. Oh, that's really sad. That's sad. <laughs> I, did, I just decided not to do dungeons. Okay. I mean, that's a fair thing to do. That, it's, it's an understandable decision. I'm just not going to do dungeons. And I'm now enjoying Dragonflight. I did step my toe into a couple of the Dragonflight dungeons as a Shadow Priest, and they were so easy. It was actually strange. The tanks never stopped. We just ran and ran, and we never had a problem at all. I can honestly say that Dragonflight's dungeons are considerably easier than Freehold at level 10. Oh, Blizz. What was wrong with Rage Fire Chasm? What was wrong with the stockades? It's where we all cut our teeth. It was fine. It was fine. I do love healing though, as that's what I did in Final Fantasy, and I'm determined not to be discouraged, especially with your audience, audience cheering me on. <laughs> of course, now that I have a level 60 character, crummy time is fair game. So I decided to create a second priest Huh. Okay. And at level 19, I took her to the Dead Mines and Ragefire Chasm in Holy Spec. It was free as fuck. <laughs> I guess they want to learn the keybinds and stuff. They've got a little experience. I'm fine with this. In World of Warcraft, this is fine. This is fine. You had a rough experience. Now you can... You want... So what I'm reading here painfully what i am reading here is that the smart play is to level until you unlock crummy time and then make an alt to have a real leveling experience that's the new player maneuver that's what you found to be a good idea was to cap a character the way blizzard intends and then re-roll to have a proper leveling experience oh sweet jesus sweet jesus <laughs> honestly it was free as fuck my dungeons went so smooth. Not one person died and the bosses felt like trash. After that, I ran them again as a disc priest and again, super free. Not a single death and I DPS the bosses hard. I ran a few more dungeons and again, fine. Only once did someone mouth off at my healing. I don't even know why as nobody died and their health was fine. But they kicked me. Why would they kick you? Healing was fine, and they kicked you. Uh, no DPS is a disc priest? Unlikely. Unless, do you not get atonement till higher level or something? This would have been leveling, right? The route? The tank would have been in charge of the route. Can't be that. Uh, you can't just say they're idiots. There would have been something. For everybody to agree to kick you, you're doing something. I'm trying to think what it is you would be doing. P.I.? What level do you get PI now? Because it's changed now with the new talent system. Is, don't you get PI to like level 40 or something like that? Level 50? Yeah, I don't think you learn PI that early. Huh. Hmm. That's. I would like to know. Why did? Why do you think you got kicked? Because we always like get half the story. Did you like AFK or something? Were you ninja pulling? Ninja pulling would get you kicked if you kept ninja pulling enemies. Or, oh, I bet I know what it is. I've cracked it. I've cracked it. You made one of the most criminal mistakes in World of Warcraft, non-Mythic Plus Dungeons. Did you ask to do all the bosses? <laughs> you dumb bastard. 
You dumb bastard. I bet you wanted to kill all the bosses, didn't you? In a dungeon. What a fucking idiot. Is that what you expect? You expect to join the dungeon and do the whole thing? Stupidity. Stupidity. That's what it be. I got screamed at while leveling Resto Shami for doing damage to mobs. Apparently, I should only do damage to bosses. <laughs> On the contrary, I was reading recently. Let me just open it and see if it's still here. Yes, it was on the Accursed MMO Champion. Uh, and I do drop in here on occasion to just keep up with the madness. Uh, about healers complaining that they have to do damage. And that they should just be able to sit and heal and then AFK all the time. There was quite a long complaint about this. Is that healers are now expected to do damage. You've always been expected to do damage. <laughs> Since day one. You've been expected to do damage. Uh, oh, here it is. It's got 27,000 views. Uh, yeah, here it is. I'll post it in the chat so you can have a little read of it later. But yeah, this is an interesting one. Uh, I like to play a healer. I like to focus on healing. I do not like to do damage if healing is not needed. So why is the game designed that way? Why do I have to spam things like Chain Lightning as a Resto Shaman? Why do I have to press Wrath as a Druid? Why can't healers just be healers and have enough gameplay to be healers? Would you guys like it if they basically put an aura into all dungeons where your health just ticked down so that healers could heal? Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun if there was just an aura that was just constantly damaging you all the time just so healers had something to do? That would be great. Ah, that would be so, so fun. <clears throat> Interestingly enough, though, there's a lot of people... Yeah, a lot of people who agreed with this. It's because Mythic Plus is badly designed. All right okay okay <laughs> i'll do that yeah oh it's so much fun so much fun how can we make it so healers have to constantly heal because that's really fun <sighs> let's just say i disagree with this anyway <laughs> well he was did so someone badmouth my oh he says oh, hang on a minute he said somebody badmouthed his healing i have no clue why as everyone's health had been kept comfortable I still got kicked. Ah, oh, well, people will be people. And apparently the rest of the party kicked the kicker for kicking me. Okay, that's not how kicking works in World of Warcraft. <laughs> they all have to have a democratic vote. <laughs> I don't know if someone told you that, if you whispered them, like, why did I get kicked? But uh, Although I will say there are a lot of people in World of Warcraft who will click yes every time a vote kick option pops up, regardless of the reason. They won't even check. They'll just click it to get rid of the screen, and they'll just click yes. They'll assume you fucked up. They'll just, they're will just they not going to check. They'll just assume you're a toxic arsehole, and they'll just kick you for no reason at all. I've seen it happen many times. I'm glad I persevered, though, Mike. I'm going to push this priest in WoW and see where it takes me, and I will update you as I go. Take care, everybody, and wish me well gliding my dragon through Dragonflight. All right, we'll see. We'll see. You've got Mythic Plus to come yet. Are you sticking with this? <laughs> that gets a little ropey in Mythic Plus, but you'll be fine. It's a great, great spec. It's a great, great spec. So uh, this priest will work fine, but it does take a little bit of finesse. A little bit of finesse. Okay. I do love updates when the guys send us updates. It, le it did lead to one of our most famous uh, drama sagas last year with the date in New York. <clears throat> All right, I can figure... Uh, Bex, I don't know if you created this title or what, but I can figure nothing from the title, Kiss Your Squirrel. Only that Bex has put a note here saying you should read this. All right, so we got some names from our wonderful website supporters. Uh, da -da, da -da -da. Savage Savra. So while I'm typing these, I will give a shout out that on our website, preachgaming.com, you can find every drama story, all with labels, tags. So certainly if you're looking for one of a certain type or a story you half remember, you should be able to find it very easily on preachgaming.com. <clears throat> it should be very, very easy for you to find. All the tags are there. All right, then. Here we go. Kiss your squirrel. I assume this has something to do with a pet. Oh, is there an achievement for kissing squirrels? There was one in Cataclysm, wasn't there? To catch the squirrels coming out of a tree. There might be a squirrel kissing achievement. All right, let's see. Howdy, preach. Oh, meowdy to you. And hi, y'all. <laughs> Howdy, preach. And hi, y'all, to the chat. I've been binging on drama time for a few years now, and it's currently one of the few things keeping my Texas ass sane. All right, we're in Team Texas. Hello to you, sir. 
We were forced back into the office a few weeks ago. Oh, do you work for Blizz? Oh, no, sorry. Activision Blizzard King. Is that what it is? I wouldn't worry about it. You feel like your life's hard, but execs are having a tough time too. So don't worry about it. <clears throat> and if you don't believe that, you're just living in a myth. You're living in a myth. <clears throat> uh, we were forced back into the office a few weeks ago uh, when they ended our remote schedule. Woohoo! Team USA and rip my game time. Okay, you're part of the problem. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> it made me go out to work and I can't play WoW. Uh, yeah, you see, that's not helpful, man. <laughs> that's not helpful at all. <laughs> it's true, though. <laughs> not coincidentally, it's probably why I suddenly find myself with the time to finally write in and contribute. My boss makes a dollar and I make a dime, so fuck him. I'll write drama time on company time. So instead of playing WoW at home, you came back to work and decided to write WoW stories. <laughs> There's a kind of gangster play. There's a kind of ball of play that's going on with that. Oh, well. Uh, last thing I'm doing is work. Fuck that. That's not happening. This story. Uh, are we, oh, so I guess we're in WoW. Yeah, we're in WoW for this one. The story takes place in the expansion that shall not be named. That covers a lot now. That could be Walls of Draenor. It could be BFA. It could be Shadowlands. Like, unfortunately, that really doesn't narrow it down, like, at all. Do we really consider BFA worse than Warlords? I consider Shadowlands worse than Warlords. If I was to put those in order, I think BFA was the best. Although it was terrible. Like, it's the best of the worst. I still think Shadowlands was worse. I mean, I, of course I do. Shadowlands caused me to leave. Like, Shadowlands was the final straw for me. But uh, I would go... Oh, no, I like what? Mm, BFA and Wad are really close. I mean, the the rating was fantastic in WAD. And we did not have any chores. That's tough. That needs, like, a debate. BFA, Warlord, Shadowlands. Mm. BFA was lit if you had corruptions. That's right at the end of the game, though. That was, like, patch point three that we got the corruptions. And it wasn't until, like, 3.5 that we got purchasable corruptions. Like, corruptions at the start were dog shit. You just got RNG'd all the time. Like, I kept picking up fucking infinite stars all the time. It was super annoying. I don't know. That's tough. Shit, I think there might be a video in that. What's worse? Shadowlands is the worst, but BFA and WAD. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. I'd really have to think about that. That's tough. Hmm. I don't know. Anyway. Let's go. Um, <clears throat> for it is gone now. It could no longer hurt us. I still don't know which expansion it is. <laughs> Fucker. All right. The guild under its current title has been around since BFA. All right. It must be Shadowlands. Must be. Must be. But we have cores of folks who have raided together since Wrath of the Lich King and many boomerangs. Oh, I like that term. Yeah, that makes perfect sense to me. People who have left and returned over the years. Yeah, I would guess I'm a boomerang now. Although I don't like that it's got boomer in it because people are just going to call me old. We've always been a progression guild. During Heroic, when it was the top tier content and then Mythic once it released, we've had varying degrees of success over the years. I'm not that old, you motherfuckers. I'm not the oldest person here. How old are you guys? How old are you guys? I'm not the oldest person here. I'm 38. I'm not the oldest person here. 59, 39, 45. See, I'm not the oldest person here. Screw you lot. I'm not. I'm not. I'm just seasoned, all right? I'm seasoned. That's all it is. I'm seasoned. I've uh, I've experienced some things. That's all it is. Copium. <clears throat> People who have left and returned over the years. We've always been a progression guild. We've had varying degrees of success over the years, but we always got ahead of the curve. And spend the rest of the tier pushing cutting edge. Sometimes we get it. Sometimes we don't. One thing to note is that probably 70% of the members stay the same for expansions. That's a good number. 70% of the, of the members stay the same from expansion to expansion. And with the other 30% coming in or out of the guild as their playtime or goals change. That's solid. Since Wrath of the Lich King, that's really good. There have been groups recruited and small mergers here and there. And that initial core has been mushed in with more like-minded cores over the time. 
As a result of all the usual guild change-ups, the GM title has passed hands from one lead to the next many, many times as the old one wises up and realizes that being GM is dog shit. <laughs> the worst experience I ever had in WoW was being GM. <laughs> I lasted... I think over the... What, what are we on now? 14 years of WoW, something like that, right? 14 or 15. I think I have been GM for about four of those years. And it was the worst. The absolute worst. Just awful. And gives it off to some next... The next poor dope in line. Officers are generally the previous GMs. <laughs> or whatever long-standing members are feeling masochistic enough to cobble the raid machine together. Then pull levers and press buttons until it works for our guild. We have been to multiple BlizzCons. Your guild's gonna die, isn't it? I'm gonna be so fucking sad at the end of this. We have been to multiple BlizzCons together at this point. With up to a dozen plus people at the last one. This guild is so doomed. This guild is doomed. After Since Wrath of the Lich King, this guild is doomed. It better not be because of a squirrel. But this info laid out to give you the background and the foundation. Here comes the drama. One which has left a mark on our Discord that exists to this very day. Maybe not dead. The scene opens in Shudderlands. Okay, so it was Shudderlands was the, the expansion that cannot be named. Pre-patch with a guild full of Nihilotha cutting-edge chads making plans for the next tier, Castle Nathria. Due to some IRL circumstances, I stepped back from raiding during Eternal Palace in BFA. Oh, gutted. Palace was good. But stayed in the guild to hang around, get ahead of the curve done, do some keys, and generally chill with the boys I enjoyed playing with. But with a new expansion on the horizon, IRL simmering down, I'd made a mistake. I volunteered to run a casual one night a week ahead of the curve team in Shadowlands. Hmm. Hmm. Now, th in theory, this is fine. I find the problem with this internally is that as soon as somebody gets some item, they swap to an alt and start taking gear again. And then they get funny about the fact that you might not be gearing their brand new alt up as quickly as some guy who's been there since week one and his tear shoulders haven't fucking dropped yet. It's fine until that point. And then people are like, eh, you know what? I've got all my shit. I'm going to come on an alt that is like doing no damage. Uh, and I still expect to get all the loot. My intent with this idea, okay, was to basically take over the long-standing optional raid night and begin including the casuals and alts for those of us who were still in the guild but couldn't commit to the Mythic Cutting Edge team. Right. Hmm. I also had old guildies coming out of the woodwork expressing their desire to get Curve on a one-night schedule. Huh. It's all, it all sounds so fun, doesn't it? Just raiding with the boys one night a week. It's what I did in Dragonflight, and I had a great time until immediately that team died because we were done. <laughs> that kill just immediately died. And we're done. <clears throat> Many had stepped away to get married, have kids, they'd moved homes, or other similar things, and were excited at the idea of playing some games together with some old friends. All right. It all sounds so promising. Yeah, it's all next year, and everybody will come back. A large motivator for me was that my now husband was one of these players. He and I met in Kata, where I, a newbie guild master, had recruited him out of trade chat one day, because we wanted a hunter to turtle tank the ads during phase one nefarium progression. What? Have I gone encounter blind? How many versions of nefarium are they? There's two, right? There's Kata and... Yeah, there's two. Do you mean the ads that poured out of the doorway? No, in Cataclysm. 
Oh, you mean the uh, the Bone Boys that ran in? You had a hunter do that? Why? What the fuck? Yeah, you mean the Bony Boys. Why would you have a hunter do that? You can only turtle one of the shocks. I'm so confused why that would ever be a strategy. Okay, I kind of want to Google this. I need to see this in play. All right. Okay, oh, it follows up here. Yes, this is a thing. And yes, I still hear about how stupid it was from him. It is really stupid. <laughs> it is really stupid. Why would you just have a tank tank them? <laughs> it's incredibly stupid. Why would you have a hunt to do it? The turtle tank. Tanks don't die from shock. What the fuck? And, and then you get shock weight. I, I don't know. That's confusing the fuck out of me. Shield block was like shield wall against those ads. They only did physical damage. I, <clears throat> whatever. Uh, <clears throat> we ultimately became friends. And he became an officer in the guild. He was the one who took over the guild in Mists of Pandaria when I had to dip to help care for a terminally ill family member. God bless. <laughs> Sorry about that. He led the charge, ran a great team in the Siege of Orgrimmar, and welcomed me back in Warlords, and then probably passed leadership off to someone else when he wanted a break. Okay, so you didn't, like, fall in love straight away. It took several expansions. It was during Legion that I, single for the time being... Oh, you were with somebody at the time. All right, so there's no cheating going on. Round of applause, audience. Round of applause. <laughs> we always assume that there's some sort of uh, cheating going on at some point. <clears throat> It was during Legion that I, single for the time being, decided to drive my ass 10 hours away to meet him IRL for spring, bake, spring break during grad school. You made the drive. Nice. 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 I had a crush on him for quite some time at this point and figured I needed to get out of my system one way or another. Or in your system. Hello! I honestly... As I drove there for those 10 hours, ticked a box in my mind where if he was just going to hit it and quit it, I was okay with it. <laughs> he drove 10 hours for a onesie? <laughs> I drive 10 hours to get your ass tapped. Uh, I don't know. That's a long drive. The longest I've gone is four. Hmm. Uh, down bad. Yeah, he needed some loving. That's, it's not sad. They, they got married. It worked out fine. <sighs> I honestly 100% expected him to hit it and quit it since he'd been very vocal this way when it came to dating for as long as I'd known him. Okay, so he made you aware. Like, the guy was straight up. All right. To my surprise, though, when he discovered that I was interested in him, he said, fuck that and started dating me serious immediately. My man. My man. Wait, for real? You, like, actually want to date me? Me. Me. The turtle tank? You want to date the turtle tank? You know, if you give me a blower, you can't say you're tanking the turtle. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. If you blow me and say you're tanking the turtle, that's, that's, that's not okay. But, you know, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's fucking do it. It started as a long-distance relationship. He says in the story that I seduced him with lasagna. Fuck me, I'm, I'm sold. <laughs> if you feed me, I'm yours. It's true. I'm like a dog. <laughs> I'm like a dog. If you feed me, I'm staying. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. Lasagna is a good choice. I, um, if you feed me up, I'm not going anywhere. I'm absolutely sticking around. Over the next few years of dating, things went well. He moved to Texas to live with me. We got engaged pre-COVID and then got married in a small backyard ceremony during the Great Plague of 2020, a decade a decade after we met in trade chat. Can we get a little round of applause for that? That's great. That's a good story. 10 years. It wasn't rushed. You didn't move in after a week of doing a pug together. That's cool. That's a really cool story. I like that. But that is not the drama. I love my husband, but... Oh, no. Oh, God. Is Kiss the Squirrel your vagina? Oh, no. That's pretty funny, though. Are you a redhead? Yeah. God, I hope so. <laughs> God, I hope so. You need to come and kiss the squirrel. <laughs> I'm going to... 
I can't say that to Emma. Fuck. How can I get Emma to say that to me? I love my husband, but. Okay, here's the but. But. He has tendencies. Oh, is it about feet? Oh. One of those tendencies is to flake in and out of running a raid team. Okay. So he's non-committal when it comes to raid teams. That's fine. He gets caught, caught up in the idea of getting the Siege of Ogrimmar gang back together like an old band. And then he taps out when it inevitably doesn't work out like the glory days of old. <laughs> so, this time, I volunteered to lead the team instead as a one night ahead of the curve orientated group in Castle Nathria. Oh, you were trying to be supportive. All right. The cutting edge team was staying as its own entirely separate entity. But we would welcome our cutting edge brothers and sisters on the head of the curve night if they wanted to come along. I've, yeah, who's turning down a carry from guildies? Nobody. Okay. <clears throat> After I volunteered, I was immediately re-promoted to an officer rank in the guild. But sadly, they changed my title to group two leader. <sighs> It's an accursed name. It's an accursed name. Yeah, you never want the group two leader. Go for group three over group two. It's fine. It's like it's like buildings that don't have a 13th floor. Just skip group two entirely. It's doomed. Go for three, four. We went with Alpha Omega. Do that. The officer meetings during pre-patch were my first exposure to a group of folks who had joined during BFA uh, during my BFA absence and were now half of the leadership team. While several of the officers were long-standing raid friends of mine who I knew very well, including the current GM, the Cutting Edge team's raid leader was a brand new person. This individual was called Savage Savra, but he liked to be called by his nickname, The Highway. I Get out. <laughs> <laughs> now for those of you in team usa all right oh, let's let's chat with the chat right now how how many people know why he's got this nickname i went with my way or the highway it's not that it's not that this is a, a definitely feels like an american thing football no idea team usa uh life's a highway my highway to hell and heaven nobody getting this one okay because everyone rides him <laughs> No, if the name didn't give it away, he's ex-military. He's ex-military. Okay, oh, okay, okay, you guys kind of are right. I thought it was his military call sign. It's not, you guys are correct. It's his, I read the word military and thought it was his call sign. It's not. This ex-military fellow was very, very big on doing things his way, meaning it was his way. Or the highway. Okay, so he's called him. You nicknamed yourself the highway to do things your way. Oh, that's disgusting. I mean, you're leaving this guild, right? My ray leader was called Alex. That's acceptable. <laughs> that's acceptable. If Alex said my nickname, you have to call me highway. That wouldn't work. <laughs> that's not going to work. He sounds like a gobshite. <laughs> Okay, let's see how the highway copes. Uh, <clears throat> I sat in on officer meetings, mostly because I was given the rank. I was one in name at this point. But we did have one very weird meeting where Savage, aka the highway, made it abundantly clear that my ahead of the curve team was not allowed to poach his cutting edge raiders. You mean they're not allowed to play in the alt raid? What do you mean by poach? Is that what that means? He needed his raiders to be 100% focused and committed to the cutting edge team. With none of this dropping in to help the other group on optional raid night or playing there in alts. Fuck you, man. It's my fucking video game on my free night. Shut the fuck up. I'll do whatever the fuck I want. The fuck do you think you're doing you're not my fucking dad shut up i was 
baffled. Baffled by this. We all are. But shrugged and went, whatever. <laughs> sure. <laughs> whatever. No problem. We've got plenty of casuals and returning raid veterans signed up. Oh, God. Is your guild group going to do better than theirs? Oh, no. The highway won't like it. <clears throat> we won't have anything to do with your raiders, and we don't need any of them. It was just the fact that some people like to play alts on their off night. But it was settled for him. I'd agreed to it. All right. Shadowlands release. I'll be honest. I actually remember the first month of Shadowlands very fondly. When has an MMO not been great in the first month? What? Right? Everything else is fine. It's not until the, they're like, you're on your 68th Torghast run that you realize you'd rather shoot yourself in the face. Right? <laughs> it's not until that point that you're like, oh shit, I would rather give a blowjob to a shotgun than continue doing this. <clears throat> I had a great time playing through the story, leveling, hunting all the new mounts, exploring, doing keys and gearing up fast. Maybe it's because I was only pushing ahead of the curve and not worried about cutting edge. Not really. It wasn't that hard. What did we have to do as Mythic Raiders? That Just the renowned thing? But everybody did that. Yeah, it wasn't a big deal. I don't know. But I did wind up in a high-level Spire's Key early on with our good cutting edge raid leader, the Highway. That run solidified my opinion of Savage. We ended up struggle bussing through struggle bussing. <laughs> That's cute. We ended up struggle bussing through it with him at the helm as our tank. Anything that any of the rest of the party suggested trying to change his route was not how this was done. He had been watching now and Jinji. Oh. You mean those same players that are currently doing plus 24s without healers? Not a great example to follow for your plus 15 weekly. Right? You mean those guys? You mean those guys who came up with a route through the, one of the new Dragonflight dungeons so ridiculous it needed an examination to figure out how they did it? That group? Probably not apt for your plus 15 weekly. All right? <clears throat> Copy the gods. Yeah, exactly. They, 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 they thought last week, I think it was last week, they broke the world record in Azure Vault by like fucking 10 minutes or something. They did the whole dungeon in five pulls. <laughs> like, not a great example. <laughs> He'd been focused intently on the MDI. And he was completely convinced that the way he was doing it was the correct way. So, we smashed our heads against the poor depleted key until we got a vault slot and our pity loot at the end. I don't know how long it took, but I do know one thing. It was on that day that I decided I would never do any content with Savage ever again. I would even check he wasn't online before asking people to do a key in guild chat. Because this guy was not worth. That's a bummer. <laughs> oh shit, he's online. Can't do any keys. <laughs> I'm not asking. I'll wait for him to be in a key. That's a play. Castle Nathria opens. And both groups start progressing at their own speed. We took a couple of weeks longer than the cutting edge group to kill normal. As expected as the head of the curve, uh, cu the, uh, curve group one night casual team. We hit heroic daddy D. Probably a solid month after the Cutting Edge team had killed it. And it was around this time that the expansion delusionment started hitting the guild. Lots of our casuals who had rejoined in the hopes of a solid expansion started to go, eh, <laughs> including my husband. <laughs> There's a message here from the author to the husband. <clears throat> to the husband or our author. I did this for you. I set this up for you. Thanks, asshole. He does this every expansion, though, so it wasn't a surprise. Also, he loves watching drama time, so hi, sorry, babe, love you, but fuck you. <laughs> so if you're here, she still loves you, but fuck you <laughs> at the same time. To be fair, he's got a history of doing this. You brought it on yourself. You brought it on yourself. But something weird started to happen. We start seeing more of the cutting edge raiders joining our curve run. 
despite the earlier edict from upon high by Savage the Highway. This influx offset the losses and our group was fine. We kept progressing towards our curved goal with plans to do the raid meta achievement shortly after to finish off the tier as far as we're concerned. Maybe we could hit a couple of early mythic bosses if the group was down for some fun. Meanwhile, oh no, okay. <laughs> Unbeknownst to me as I didn't give a shit, <laughs> The cutting edge team had become hard stuck. On the on which boss? Come on, which boss are they hard stuck on? Mythic Nathria. I kind of get why guilds got stuck on this boss. We killed it in a, like an hour, but I mean our guild was very good. But I can totally guess. It's not Stone Legion Generals. Uh, no, it's a boss that like a lot of not sort of like top two hundred guilds got really stuck on. Stone Legion, Shriek Boy. No, it's not Shriek Wing. Uh, it's uh, the third boss, Hungering Devourer. It was a long boss. It's a long boss and you need everybody to kind of... You can have like half the group carry that, but you kind of need people to have awareness. You do. You do. It like certainly with the early strats in the first few weeks, you kind of needed people to play it correctly. And man, you know, the, the problem with that, it's the first fight where you needed a lot of people to manage their own debuffs and health and things like that. It could definitely be a group. Uh, and it's a long-ass boss, man. That boss is like seven minutes or something in the uh, in the first weeks. Well, I wasn't keeping up with the details of what the Cutting Edge group was up to. You didn't have to be a genius to pick up on the Raiders' frustration with the situation. <laughs> well, they said, they, to be clear, they did say earlier on, sometimes they finish the Mythic tier, sometimes they don't. So they're, they're taking several months uh, to clear the content. So Hungering Devourer makes sense. We had a vocal member of the guild. Of course you did. Which guild doesn't? Enter the Australian. Also known as the Aussie shitstirrer, Treggies. Treggies was a mage that had deigned to help out our poor guild in Castle Nathria. In his mind, coming from his mythic background, he was, in his own words, the true Giga Chad. And was R and Jesus' gift to World of Warcraft. Mmm. 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 I like people like this. <laughs> I hope we take extra special care of them because we can't kill it without them. Our Koig Edge team included his girlfriend and was therefore good enough for his alt to raid with. So he humbled himself enough to drag them to Nihilotha Cutting Edge. Oh, he joined because his girlfriend was in the guild. Oh, he took a step down to play with his girlfriend. I'll play with you pause for my girlfriend. I will help you get your cutting edge, yeah? I'll come in and I'll solo the boss. Yeah, that's what I'll do. What a nice guy. Oh, what a hero. Like, thank God. Savage and crew kissed this guy's ass despite his toxic attitude. But he was top of the DPS. <laughs> Wow. <clears throat> the leadership said he had, and then they would caps lock the strats. <laughs> the strats. <laughs> Scream it to the rooftops, my friends. He has the strats. <clears throat> Treggies, of course, had ascended back to his superior cutting edge guild for Shadowlands, but was still lurking in our. Oh, so he's not here. Okay. He lurks in our Discord. As a member, since his girlfriend was a raider. Mm. It was from her that he had gotten wind of the Cutting Edge group's current progression, or rather, lack thereof. And I can only assume that it was his undying superiority complex that prompted him to drop a custom-created, steaming hot, drama-filled meme in our Discord's general chat one afternoon. What? Preach. I implore you to share this monstrosity with the chat because it is straight fire. The damn thing was a masterpiece. Even the people it was calling out thought it was hilarious. I painstakingly recreated the whole thing, redacting the personal info and created the safe version for you. Okay, so I've got a note from Bex here. Yes, this is safe. This is going to be better for our visual audience. So our audio listeners, you might want to check this out, but I, I don't know what it is. Let me open it. 
Oh, it's a video. Okay, it's our uh, it's our good friend. Hold on, let me open it on YouTube. Oh, it has to be on this website to have the captions. Okay. Uh, how do I full screen? Can I full screen this, Bex? Alright. I don't even have a timeline to play it. Mm. No idea. Okay. Alright. So, well, we all know the video anyway. I, mean, uh, I don't particularly need anything else. Alright. <laughs> Came back for Shadowlands and joined. Okay, that's a guild killing meme, actually. Oh, that is a guild killing meme right there. <laughs> that is a guild killing meme. Oh, fucking hell. Uh, needless to say, everybody watched the video. And it caused a right hubbub. <laughs> uh. <laughs> People started using those little custom Discord emoji reactions that we had set up on our server. Oh, God. Skull face clown. Or whatever it was. <laughs> the trouble started getting worse when my husband opted for the kill yourself reaction. <sighs> clown skull nerd. That was the one. Oh, my God. Oh, God. This is brutal. This is brutal. This is so fucking toxic. Now, <clears throat> before I delve further into the shitstorm this prompted, I want to clarify that we reacted with this and many other meme reactions at each other all the time. Okay, I understand what kiss your squirrel means now. Bro, look what I got from my vault. Kiss, simp. Dude, we just depleted the hell out of that plus 17 key, lol. Oof, this is fine. Kiss were examples that you would find all over the place. <clears throat> oh, we've got a visual example of how they would do it. Okay, this has got names in it. All right. Oh, I could do it without the name. Okay. Uh, so I could, I could do this. Per league sources, Ian Hazacostas has allegedly had damning emails leaked about the balancing of Holondris. I don't ever want to hear those crybabies talk about a raid being undertuned again. Give that fucking crab 90 million HP and make every mechanic wipe the raid. Smiley face. Sus. Uh, I'm not... Yes, daddy. Okay, so you use the emojis all the time. Okay. All right. <clears throat> and then nerf it. Yeah, yeah, then nerf it. Okay. I mean, every Discord has this. Yes, daddy. Yeah, yes, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> I've not seen this before. Someone didn't really think out this JFK memorial. <laughs> That's fucking funny. Uh, for our audio dudes, it's four screens in like a square, but JFK's heads in the middle, so all the borders form a crosshair. Uh, oof. Uh, yeah, you get the picture. I do. I get the picture. <clears throat> well, our good friend Aussie Shitstirrer took my husband's kiss reaction personally. Oh, he got offended. The guy posting the offensive meme is now the victim. Right. Okay. Which is very stereotypical, I would say. The guy posting the offensive meme is offended now. Yes, here it is. How dare you? How dare you look up at his throne and even attempt to spit on his toes? <laughs> While the resulting Discord chat wound up being nuked from orbit and lost to time, I dearly wish I had screenshotted it for you. But I do kind of remember what was said. It went something like this. What the fuck, bro? Kill myself? That's completely toxic. About as toxic as dropping that meme into the Discord, honestly. You aren't even a raider, bro. Why are you even here? Where do you get off saying that to me? You're not a raider either. You're not even in the guild. It was just a meme, bro. Yeah, and so the reaction is just a meme as well. That was between our friend and the husband. Other guildies started picking up on the drama unfolding. I was in the voice channel with two of my besties at the time, and we were watching this all unfold while laughing. <laughs> we were laughing at the meme, 
and the furious arguing back and forth. I originally did chime in to tell everybody to chill as an officer. Don't get involved. Laugh, but stay out of what was starting. But then, Treggy's girlfriend had to support her boyfriend and started dogpiling on my husband. As well. Is this going to turn into a cat fight? Oh, no. She started calling my husband shit, toxic, etc. and demanding that for promoting murder... He should be banned from the Discord. He's promoting murder. <clears throat> well, that wasn't going to happen because what she didn't know is that my husband, my husband owned the Discord server. <laughs> Unlucky. <laughs> Unlucky. I'd also gotten to the fuck this point. The guy was calling a reaction to the Discord for a guild that he hadn't even been active in for months. Toxic. Like he wasn't being toxic. And at this point, one of my two buddies was riled up and ready to go and fuck him over as well. Preacher in the chat. <laughs> I know why Mark Black is so polite and apologetic. It's because there exists on the far eastern coast a man. This man is the avatar of all displaced hatred unapologeticness and outright toxicity my boy mark blur isn't a bad guy but the motherfucker is a hundred percent of the entire country's name. i don't know who mark blur is who's mark blur m-o-r-k-b-l-a-h who's that their friend oh it's one of the names here okay so this is the first time mark has been mentioned okay Hey, there's somebody they were talking to in his Discord. Okay, so it's one of the guildies. My boy Mark Blur isn't a bad guy. But that motherfucker is 100% of the USA's anger. Jesus Christ. He is 100% of Team USA's bile and fuck you asshole attitude once he becomes triggered. And this isn't ter terribly difficult to do on an ordinary day. And today was an extraordinary one. I sent Mark, Mark Blur after him. <laughs> if you want to get involved, Mark, send it. And yes, chat, no judgment needed. I am guilty for doing this. Wow, you've got like a fuck. you've got like Jet Li in a collar, like you unleash. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. You've got like Jet Li and you fucking set the collar off and send him in. He immediately starts reacting kiss to literally everything Trick types. That's a good start. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> he then decides to expand it as uh, the Australian wasn't responding fast enough for his liking. So he started responding kiss to every single post in Discord, including my husband. The randos in the middle who were arguing... Every single message during the shitstorm of arguing had got a kiss reaction. This, of course, was just gasoline on the fire of our guild. Savage, the highway, and officers have now become aware that shit is popping off in Discord. They break from the Mythic Plus key they were running to get involved, but it's mostly lost in the noise by now as the Discord is a complete dumpster fire. Personally, I'm kind of enjoying the show. I think I would too. Yeah, a little bit. I like me a good bit of drama from time to time. As long as I'm not the one who started it. Yeah. <laughs> then Morkbler gets banned from the Discord. He sends me a DM, so I unban him. And he starts kissing the GM. <laughs> He's banned again. I unban him again. I ban Treggies and Treggies' girlfriend. They get unbanned by another mod and instantly come back in swinging. <laughs> Savage quickly realizes that another Discord admin is working against him. And a shit sob starts in the officer chat. Who is unbanning people? I just type, you guys are. No, not Treggies. Who's unbanning Markbler? Me. Back in the main chat, reactions have started getting deleted off of messages by now, but then instantly reappearing. 
Mark Blur is no longer the only one spamming kiss as the rest of the group starts joining in. <laughs> there are at least five to six other people spamming kiss to every message being typed. <laughs> this is such a gamer moment. This is like the most unreal gamer moment. <clears throat> Will you stop unbanning Markbler? I have decided he is banned. They ban him and I unban him. He is actually loving this. Markbler is having the time of his life. I reply, no. <laughs> Not unless Treggy stays banned. He's the one who kicked all this off. Seeing that deleted reactions is a losing battle. Whole messages start disappearing so they can't react to them. My husband chimes in around this point as things are truly out of hand and someone needs to be the adult in the room. So he starts typing one letter messages in Discord of the alphabet so people can reply kiss. <laughs> Shortly after, the other people replying kiss start doing the same. Making so many messages they can't be controlled. Jesus fucking Christ. <clears throat> At the end of the alphabet, my husband types, maybe we should have a chat about this. Let's freeze Discord chats and talk. Uh, di di they're directed at me from across the room. Will you ask Mark Blur to relax? Okay, so the husband asks our author to call off her hound. <clears throat> you guys made it all of, nearly all the way to the end of the alphabet. Hey, good job, stream. <laughs> good job. You nearly made it. You were too... Oh, there we go. We finished it off. Not in the correct order, but you got there. <clears throat> I ruthlessly ask Mark Blur that the fun is over. Let's relax. The officers need to start cleaning up this shit pile. He says, but I'm having fun, but agrees to stop. My husband then goes into editorial mode. And starts writing a big long paragraph. Not reading it. I'm not reading it. In general chat saying something along the lines of this. Everybody. Seriously. Chill out. We're going to talk and work all this out. Sorry for hard feelings. No offense was meant. But don't start shit and expect it not to have consequences. We probably shouldn't tell people you don't know to kill themselves. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> we all learned something today. <laughs> of course, I did the only thing I could do. And technically, it was my husband. So I reacted with a kiss. <laughs> Your husband takes all this time to write a big ass paragraph and you stick kiss at the end <laughs> but she does know him so lessons learned right she does know him <clears throat> it did not go over well he did not find it funny as he stared at me across the room <clears throat> if it, emma did that i would honestly be pissing my pants honestly and it did not go over well with the officers it was time for an officer meeting Ooh, <laughs> shit the meeting, all things considered, stayed pretty civil. Savage expressed that he didn't like having his Discord decisions countermanded. <laughs> this would never happen in the military. <laughs> I can't. I can't, dude. I can't. I can't with someone who calls themselves the highway and is comparing this to his time in the military. <laughs> <laughs> this would never happen in the military i expressed that i didn't like having folks unilaterally banned and that it was my husband's discord to fucking begin with my husband mentioned that he had kept it up and going after not leading the guild anymore as a home for everyone to hang out but they were welcome to transition to another discord we also agreed that we would not knee-jerk ban anyone right now next up was the kill yourself emoji Okay, so the next item on the agenda is the kiss emoji. Savage held that the emoji kiss was immature and needed to be taken down immediately. 
one of the officers who rarely if ever speaks up immediately asks why since treggies used to yell at people to kill themselves all the time during our night of the brook <laughs> something i had not been aware of because i wasn't there but of course he did my husband said no we don't need to get rid of emojis they're funny <laughs> It had been a guild meme for some time and now a Treggies was the only one who cared about it and he's not even in the guild and that his credibility was clearly tanked by the fact that he was a toxic cunt who would tell people this all the time. Then one of Savage of Savage's officers chimed in. How many officers have you guys got? Now this is the only part about it that I do genuinely feel guilty about and I sincerely want to apologize about this. All right, that's from the author. Of the three cutting edge officers... That I wasn't too familiar with. Savage and two others. This one. Had an actual history. On the subject of killing. Ki- of Kiss. I won't go into details here to protect their privacy. But it was obvious that the reaction would hit differently for them. For very real and very real reasons. Okay so they've had a suicide in their lives at some point I imagine. Again. Folks who weren't aware of this history. As it was known amongst the private select few. But also felt that without that background knowledge, you couldn't hold people accountable for memeing with a reaction that had existed in our Discord for years. Nothing was truly decided, but the immediate fire was put out and everyone went to bed for that evening. All right, so no decision was made. Okay. (laughs) Ultimately, what was decided in the many, many meetings and whispers over the next few days was that the Savage Officer Corps just wasn't happy. They were going to talk to all the raiders and go and make their own guild with its own Discord. Anyone who wanted to stay, anyone who wanted to make a new cutting edge guild with them could go. All of the officers agreed this would probably be fine. Savage went around talking to the raiders he chose, came back to meet with all the guild leadership together and let us know that based on their talks, we probably need to do a lot of recruiting. The remaining half of the officer corps said, fine. (laughs) All right. Thanks for the heads up. Good luck. And Savage and his two officers quit. All told, a lot of recruiting, he said. Exactly three raiders left. (laughs) Oof. (laughs) Several players from our curve team, which was now considered to be the best team, joined the cutting edge team and killed Devourer the next week. Oh, that stings. Apparently, the highway did not do very well. As for all the recruiting we need to do, our curve team managed to kill Heroic Denathrius a week or two after the incident with some help from old friends who were clearly poaching from the Cutting Edge team. And after that, it was pretty easy for the Cutting Edge team's remaining officers to snag a few more raiders to join their team, myself included, who stepped up. Without Savage there, I was able to play the Mythic team again. Yay! <laughs> I had no issues joining in for higher level content with old friends, especially since my husband and a large chunk of the folks I had started the curve team had also started to drop away as we had killed Danny D. I told the curve crew that I would run the curve group through the end of the tier, but that I was going to focus on building another team next year. We'd still have a run on that night, but it would be the cutting edge optional heroic night open to appropriately geared casuals and not a completely separate group. Oh, so a normal second team. Just the alt night. That's all. Fully enough, even with all this, guild morale improved dramatically. We really didn't lose that many people, and the ones we did were actually part of the fucking problem, is usually the case. Turns out there isn't exactly one way to do things, and that sometimes it makes sense to adjust. Who knew? As for the kiss emoji, we no longer tell people to kiss in the traditional sense. Instead, they are directed to kiss your squirrel. You could thank one of our grumpy old popcorn-loving curve raiders for coining the term. Not one, but (laughs) we've made several emojis that make it so it looks like you're kissing a squirrel. (laughs) And these still exist in our Discord and are still utilized daily by friends. Yes, so we just made some new ones. Yeah, the Cutting Edge team did pretty well with Progression Shadowlands, though we didn't get Cutting Edge. You ended up 8 out of 10, Castle Nathria, 9 out of 10, Sanctum, and 6 out of 11, Sepulchre. Everyone was burned out by then. We're pushing for Cutting Edge again this tier, sitting at 4 out of 8. The sub 20% pulls on Curig, as I write. Most of the raid team is still the same. One of the Cutting Edge raiders who left with Savage came back. 
quickly. Yeah, I can imagine. The bulk of the casuals of the curve team who still play remain in the guild and often come with us on our off night to get meta achievements. I'm not certain whatever happens to Savage and his crew. And while I don't wish anyone harm, I honestly couldn't give a fuck. <laughs> as long as our guild, the weird amalgamation of cores smooshed together over the expansions, keeps on kicking, I'm good. We can't wait to see each other at BlizzCon again. Oh, hopefully I will get to go to the next BlizzCon. And if so, please come and say hi. I would love to meet your guild. If one of you wants to dress as a big pair of lips and a squirrel, then I'll know what we're talking about. If it ever comes back, and often hang out when we find ourselves near another member's hometown. Anyway, out of all the random guild nonsense over the years, the Kiss Your Squirrel incident stands out as one of the craziest episodes. I'll take my blame for fanning the flames, but honestly, it worked out better. I hope you all found this story entertaining and that you're all well. Truly enough, take care of your mental health and seek help if you need it. Your guilds and FCs are better with you around. Wonderful people of the internet, best wishes. And don't forget, everybody, to kiss your squirrel. <laughs> oh, we've got some... Oh, these are the emojis. Uh, I'm not sure if we can show these. Definitely going to give away the server. <laughs> Sometimes a good purge is needed. Sometimes. Banger story. S tier. Thank you so, so much. What a tale. And I'm sure I'll be hearing about kissing your squirrel for quite some time to come. Absolutely wonderful. Uh, that was great. That was a journey. My mouth is sore from laughing. Like, I, I mean, we went on some journeys there. We went on some journeys. That was great. Awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, that just brings you to the streams for this week. On Monday is Final Fantasy VIII by decree. It will also be one of our sub goals. I will have bright yellow hair, as uh, we did with our subathon. Uh, well, well September that we did. We have bright yellow hair. All kinds of stuff going on on Monday. It should be a ton of fun. All right, so be good. There's some good YouTube coming out over the weekend, including a, a real big update to our office. So I'll give you a full tour of all the damage and all that, uh, and uh, our first look at raiding in guild wars so lots of entertainment for you over the weekend as well thank you for everybody who subbed during drama and supports us in what we do truly appreciate you you're amazing and if you'd like to send us stories of drama it's drama at preachgaming.com send them in we would love to hear from you all all right be good i'll see you again bye